What's up factory workers and new subs, welcome to the Gunpla Space Factory. I'd like to begin the video by saying that the factory has reached over 500 subs. This operation keeps on growing, we're gonna have to expand the colony here pretty soon. I'm stoked. Thank you very much for subbing, I'm gonna keep doing my very best to bring you the best content I could possibly produce. Today I'm very excited because we're going to get to build probably what's arguably one of the most OP grunt suits ever. The Middle Eastern Nation's mass produced mobile suit WMS-03 Maganak. If it wasn't already apparent, I'm a huge fan of Gundam Wing. And while my taste of Gundam series might be questionable, the awesome Maganak design is certainly far from it. And since I apparently live under a rock, I didn't know Bandai was going to release this kit. And I actually stumbled upon it on Amazon while shopping for other stuff. This was back in March and it was up for pre-order, but it wasn't due to ship until early May. And by the time I actually got it, the major Gunpla YouTube channels had already had it for a month and had already done their reviews. Still, as I always say, better late than never. And besides, here at the factory we're not a review channel, we're a mobile suit factory. In space. Wow, the pictures on the box always make the kits look great. But I could never get my kids to pose like that. When I try, they always look whack. Posing's not my forte. Still, I'm stoked to get this on the production line. Well, let's put on our hard hats and begin the work shift. Let's do our best. I begin by opening the box and unboxing the contents. The box contains five runners, plus polycaps, packaged in three bags. Along with a sheet of number stickers, foil stickers, and the instruction sheet. I take a quick scope at the manual, and the color guide. Next, I move on to the straight build. At the time of filming this, I had busted my thumb pretty bad doing some home improvement stuff. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to assemble the kit. The band-aid made it really hard to handle the small parts, but it wasn't too painful to get through this. And I was really looking forward to building the Maganac, so I powered through it. It's been a couple of weeks since then, and my thumb's pretty much healed, so it's good as new. Ever since I started making these build videos, I've become more self-conscious about my hands. Like I used to be a really bad nail biter, but thanks to the channel, I have been able to drop that bad habit. Still, when I injure my hands, I always worry if it's gonna look too icky on camera. I don't wanna gross you guys out.
the Maganag was a fun straight build and some of you experienced builders will take about an hour or less to build it. It's pretty quick and fun. The high grade Maganak does not disappoint. It is a very good looking mech and true to the anime and boasts a huge shield and great armaments. Bandai did a good job of hiding the seam lines within the panel lines to the point where I don't think there's much seam removal to be done. Just look at it though, look how badass it looks. Man, just looking at it will make any nearby Leo blow up. Speaking of the Leo, I painted the high grade Leo in another video, which you can check out right here. These recent Wing Gundam kits have been amazing. Granted, the bar was set pretty low by their 90s counterparts, holy crap. Can I say crap on YouTube? Well, it don't matter since YouTube took away my partnership back in March, so it's all good. With minimal detailing, panel lining, and a good flat top coat, the Maganak would look amazing, but we're going to do the works. I'm stoked to see what the Maganak looks like painted. But for now, we close up shop and get some rest. The real work starts tomorrow. The next day, I quickly disassembled the Maganak and began forming a plan in my head on how to approach the painting process. Every kit will have its own unique way. Using a 5,000th filler gauge will work wonders, prying apart some of the parts with very tight fit tolerances. It's still metal, so I do my best not to mar the plastic. I just take my time doing this. It actually works very well. I know they make a tool specifically for Gunpla, but meh. This works for me. Next, nub removal using a file. The lower legs have a raised panel line instead of a recessed panel line, which I think could look better with a recessed panel line. Using a scriber, I scribe along these panel lines. The leg on the left has a scribe panel line. I think it looks better. And here's both legs after scribing the panel lines. Next, I sand all the parts using 3M fine sanding sponge. The rifle's muzzle breaks a little bland. So using a pin vise, I bore out the muzzle brake. And using a micro drill bit, I bore out the sides of the muzzle brake as well. much better. The plastic did get a little white, but the muzzle will be painted later on so it's no big deal. I finish off any rough edges with fine sanding sponge. Now to remove the beam rifle seam line. I glued both halves using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and after it's cured, I use a flexi file to sand down the seam line and then smooth it out using extra fine sanding sponge. I brush any remaining sanding dust from the parts and throw them in the parts washer. After 10 minutes in the parts washer, I rinse the parts with warm water. I place them on a paper towel and let them dry for a few hours. After they're dry, I begin masking all the fitment pegs. This will make reassembly after painting so much easier. Here's all the parts after masking them. 
There was some race detail on the head that I obliterated when I was trying to remove the nubs. So I had to rebuild them using some styrene sheet. Next I placed all the parts on alligator clips to get them ready for priming. This time, I thinned some to me at liquid surfacer one part thinner one part primer in an airbrush jar to use in one of my siphon feed airbrushes. The Maganag's a thick boy, it's gonna need a lot of primer. So a gravity feed airbrush won't be ideal for this. I give the parts one light coat then one heavy coat with the airbrush set at 25 psi. Siphon feed airbrushes tend to perform better at a bit higher pressure than their gravity feed counterparts, especially when spraying primer. I think I ended up using 20 milliliters of thin primer on the Maganac. And even though I mixed quite a bit in an airbrush jar, I still ran out. I ended up pouring the last remaining drops of primer from the siphon feed airbrush jar into a gravity feed to be able to finish spraying the rest of the parts. And here's the parts after curing overnight. For the tan parts, I found Tamiya XF55 deck tan to be a very close match. I thin it using the usual 50-50 ratio. Pouring the paint into the gravity feed cup is always so satisfying to me. To avoid tragedy, make sure you always cap your airbrush. I will spray these parts with one light coat then a heavy coat with the airbrush set at 20 psi.
For the armor plates and yellow details, I mixed a custom yellow using Mr. Color GX White as a base. Then I added some Mr. Color GX Yellow, a few drops of Tamiya Red Brown, and a few drops of Tamiya Orange. I sprayed these parts with one light coat and then a heavy coat with the airbrush set at 20 PSI. For the brown parts, I mixed a custom brown using Tamiya XF49 Khaki as a base. Then added the last of my remaining Tamiya Red Brown with a couple of drops of Tamiya Black. And a couple of drops of Tamiya Green. It was slightly more difficult for me to match this color, but I think it came out pretty close. As before, I will spray these parts with a light coat, then a heavy coat, with the airbrush set at 20 PSI. On the larger parts, I wanted to give pre-shading a go. But instead of using two color hues, I just sprayed a few extra coats along the line so that they would be darker. So I'm not sure if this technically counts as pre-shading or post-shading or any shading at all, but I think it looked alright. And on this piece, I pre-shaded the lines first, then added a light pink coat. I was stoked on how it came out. I was actually cheering through my mask, you can sort of hear it. For the black parts, I will be spraying them with Mr. Color Metal Color Iron. I found that you don't need to thin this stuff, it's ready to go out of the bottle. This is my first time using this metallic paint, so the lower torso will be my test piece. I sprayed this piece with two light coats with the airbrush set at 13 psi. This metallic paint is polishable, so it it looks very shiny after you polish it with a q-tip. It looks pretty good. So I will spray the rest of the black parts with this iron metallic. Polishing with this paint is so satisfying and it also helps bring out the details. It looks like weathered metal. It looks pretty neat.
Next, I move on to the joints. These pieces I did not wash in the parts washer, so instead I will just spray them down using some isopropyl alcohol. I will be spraying them with Mr. Color, Metal Color, Chrome Silver, with my airbrush also set at 13 psi. Instead of masking, I just quickly wrap a paper towel around the thrusters to spray the interior in chrome silver. And after all that spray work, here's all the parts after curing overnight. Next I paint the mono eye using pink fluorescent paint. I painted these round recess details off camera with Mr. Color Metal Color Iron. I'm going to take a reverse wash effect and just polish the tops of the rings so it gives the illusion of two parts. I really like this effect. I do the same for the vents and the surrounding detail around the eye. The armor plates and shoulder plates of the Magani come molded in a single color. So in order to bring out this armor plate detail, these parts have to be carefully masked and painted. I meant to record the masking detail but it was one of those days where I got home from work and I was tired and I just forgot to press the record button so all I have is the footage of me unmasking these parts. I think the effect came out pretty nice, it beats the stickers for sure. Now I'm going to partially assemble some of the parts with tight fit tolerances before sealing in the colors with a clear coat. If I clear coat them as is, it will make it really hard to fit them together later on in final assembly. Each layer of paint adds slight thickness to the parts and with enough layers it will get pretty thick and nearly impossible to fit back together. And now for the deadly part of the build. This is 2K urethane clear coat, the same stuff they use at auto collision repair shops. It's super tough but super deadly. I mix it 4 parts clear coat, 2 parts hardener and 2 parts reducer. And I stir for a couple minutes. I spray all the parts with one light coat then a heavy coat with my airbrush set at 25 psi. The reason I use this stuff instead of regular hobby clear coats is because of its durability. Some of you might be able to relate to this. After you spent all this time painting your kits and then later on try to pose them, it actually is really easy to scratch them, especially if you use hobby grade clear coats. But this clear coat is so tough that it's really hard to scratch. I mean, just go outside and try to scratch the clear coat off your car with your finger now. You won't be able to. I'm sure some of you will be able to but your fingernail will be destroyed at that point and that's what I'm trying to get at. This stuff is super tough and it takes a lot to scratch it. The big cons is that it's super deadly so you need to have the right protective gear. Another big con is that it takes forever to cure, usually 48 hours before you can do anything else. Also if you somehow mess up this application process, uh, I don't know what to tell you, 
it's so hard it's so tough to get off that you might as well just buy another kit at that point but it's not that difficult to master this spoons are your best friend just spray the spoons spoon plop bro And here's the parts after not going anywhere near them and letting them cure for 48 hours. I tried to clear coat the beam rifle to seal in the metallic effect but I felt that the gloss coat just dulled its shine, it, it doesn't look right. Instead of reapplying the metallic effect, I chose to go another route. I masked off some of the details. and resprayed the rifle with Tamiya XF60 Dark Yellow. I did thin easy coats around the masking to prevent the paint from bleeding through. I think you can tell where I'm going with this. Desert mech? Desert rifle. Here's my attempt at doing some freehand camouflage. I used some of the leftover brown paint that I mixed earlier. I apologize for my hand being in the way. It's hard to spray small detail and still keep track of the camera shot. And by the time I noticed it was too late. After letting the paint cure and applying a couple decals, I go ahead and seal it all in with Alclad flat top coat. Next, I remove the masking to reveal the metallic detail. I think it came out pretty good. For the scope, I cut out a small hole on some masking tape and spray using fluorescent pink paint. Nice. And now, to smoke out the thrusters. I also tried to smoke out the rifle's muzzle. But the effect wasn't too noticeable here. So now that the 2K urethane clear coat has cured, I go ahead and pretty much fully assemble the Maganac minus a couple of parts. Look how glossy this boy is. At this stage the Maganac looks nearly finished, but there's still a couple more things to be done. And now moving on to panel lining. Brown wash works best with yellow, and I find that black worked alright with the tan. Panel lining this shield was very satisfying. Next, some aftermarket decals. I guess there's no right or wrong placement of decals, especially when Bandai doesn't include any with their high grade kits. So this is a good opportunity to get creative and this is what I came up with. Decals always go a long way with high grade kits. They really help them come to life. After the decals have dried, it's time to partially disassemble the Maganac one last time for the final clear coat to seal in all this work. I will be top coating the Maganac using my favorite Alclad Clear Flat Top Coat. I sprayed these parts with a couple of heavy coats with my airbrush set at 25 psi. The Alclad Flat Clear Coat goes on glossy, but as it dries, it loses the shine and turns into a nice matte finish. This will be the last time my airbrushes meet the Maganac. It's kind of a bittersweet moment. I really love to paint these kits, but there's only so much to paint per kit. Still. After 20 plus hours of working on the kit, 
I am ready to see the fruits of this labor of love. And for the final time, here's the parts after curing overnight. And now, final assembly. Wow. I can't wait to see the final result. It's so rewarding. And here it is, the WMS-03 Maganac, straight out of the assembly line, ready for Middle East operations and raids with the Maganac Corps. Painting the Maganac has really brought out its potential. It's a wonderful mech. I'm always surprised at how good grunt units can look when you just take the time to paint them. What's insane to me is that this Maganac is only a $14 kit, which I consider rather cheap. And once you paint it and detail it, it will fit right in next to your RG, Wing Gundam, and Toggies. This kit was especially rewarding to me. I didn't realize I was going to feel this good about it after I finished it. If you're a fan of Gundam Wing, buy this kit and paint it. You'll love it. Because this is still a small channel, at the beginning of March, YouTube took away the factory's partnership. As a result, the factory hasn't been getting much exposure lately. So if you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. This will help out the channel so much. Also, check out the factory's Instagram and Twitter for updates in between videos. If you're feeling generous and like to support the factory directly, check out the new Patreon page. I'd be eternally grateful. Anyway, that concludes the work shift. Thank you for your hard work. I hope to see you here on the next video.